Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy Friday, literally in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have uh, somehow washed up in the main street of Jasper, Florida. Anybody who wants to see what the collapse of global industrial civilization uh, looks like, I suggest Jasper, Florida. Uh, Unbelievable. I mean, this is downright creepy, but uh, it is Friday morning, and normally I would be over at mongabay.com for my ecological meltdown roundup rant. We'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, we're going to <coughs> instead just go right over here to the mainstream media while we sit here in Jasper, Florida, for this article from good old, this is right here from Yahoo News intelligence officers predict a future shaped by faceless enemies like disease and climate change. Uh, make sure you guys getting the full effect of, uh, of uh, pretty much what this article will be talking about. <clears throat> the intelligence community, yes, the intelligence community has published a wide-ranging report detailing its predictions about the state of the world in the next two decades. Uh, well, I guess, uh, are you already back? Uh, you, yeah. You done? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Very easy, though. All right. Because I'm in the middle of this rant. This is a perfect place for this rant, brother. All right. <clears throat> The National Intelligence Council, there's a scary word. The National Intelligence Council, in a report released Thursday, meaning yesterday, oh yeah, it is now Friday, April 9th. So this was a report was released Thursday, April 8th, <clears throat> suggested that regardless of how humanity confronts ongoing challenges, some of the biggest threats will not be caused or instigated by human perpetrators. Yes, these global challenges will likely include, quote, climate change, disease, financial crises, and te technology disruptions, which could create food and water security, increase migration <clears throat> and its destabilizing effects <coughs> create new health challenges and decimate biodiversity the authors write yes so what do you think as they're using as a major example of the threat to this planet one of the major examples of the threats they're talking about is the ongoing corona panic. Yes. Which all the authors of the report describe as the most disruptive global event since World War II. I'm not getting into a corona panic bad hair day. Uh, the National Intelligence Council acting like the corona panic is an example of, of devastating global breakdown. Yeah, yeah. I, I, anyway, we're going, uh, we're going to skip ahead from the corona panic as an example of the worst thing that could happen to this planet over the next 20 years. Let's get back to the report moving on from uh, that quote. These challenges these challenges will intersect and cascade, including in ways that are difficult to anticipate. National security will require not only defending against armies and arsenals, but also withstanding and adapting to the shared global challenges, close quote. <clears throat> the National Intelligence Council a small body within the office of the director of national intelligence 
uh, composed of senior experts on various regions and threats was formed in 1979 and tasked with peering into the near and distant future. Its global trends reports issued every four years are drafted in an effort to help senior policymakers, lawmakers, and private citizens think strategically about the possible evolution of threats to the current world order and how the future might look depending on how the U.S. confronts them. The report draws not only on the analysis of members of the council, but also on interviews and conversations with academics, civil society organizations, outside experts, and even high school students. Yes, high school students. Uh, there you go. I, I think uh, a high school student could come up uh, with this no-brainer report. Uh, okay. <clears throat> According to the report's authors, whose analysis is speculative, but based on available facts and trends, say there are several alternative scenarios that could play out by 2040. Okay, these are the alternative scenarios. The first, a stated goal of the Joe Biden administration is, quote, a renaissance of democracies, close quote, yes, a renaissance of democracies in which the United States and its allies have ushered in a new era of democratic norms and structured and structures, yes, buoyed by growing global economy and improved quality of life for people everywhere. So here is the man. <clears throat> here is the man right here that is going to usher in a new era of democracies. Yes, I, I, I know. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly have my faith in that man leading us into scenario number one. Uh, okay. <clears throat> in this future scenario, we'll call it the Joe Biden scenario, the analysts write, the authoritarian form of government demonstrated by Russia and China, yes, demonstrated by Russia and China, certainly no authoritarian government in the good old United States, will be unsuccessful, yes, partly due to lagging innovation brought on by, quote, years of increasing societal controls and monitoring, close quote. Yes, because of the years of increasing societal controls and monitoring over there in Russia and China, uh, because of those, that, that societal monitoring uh, over there in Russia and China, I have seen no evidence of uh, years of increasing societal controls and monitoring in our own country. Uh, anyway, however, China has already demonstrated success in technical innovation, partly because of aggressive intellectual property theft. Yes. <clears throat> and partly through a broad mobilizing of its society in ways not possible in a democratic country. One more time. Let's look at the ways not possible. Yes, uh, not possible in a democratic country. Here you go. Here is a view of our own democratic country. Uh, what are we doing? We're outside of City Hall paying a $250 deposit on a water meter. All right, uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's get into the second analysis. 
Hi. In the second analysis, we're getting a little bit more realistic here. The analysts predict a possible, quote, world adrift. This is the world adrift uh, scenario in which the prevailing chaos created by societal divisions, disinformation, slow economic growth, slow economic growth, and other factors continues, quote, largely unaddressed, giving Beijing further opportunities to take advantage of divisions in the West, but not providing incentive for China to constructively address challenges as a global leader either. There you go. Okay, that is scenario number two, the world adrift. Did you join the church or not? I joined the church when I was born. There you go. He joined the church when he was born. Yes. All right. We're now going to look at the competitive coexistence scenario. Alternatively, the authors suggest the U.S. and China, I don't know, they never mention Russia again in this story, the U.S. and China could enter an area of, quote, competitive coexistence in which the country's, plural, economic future was inextricably linked, lowering the chances for outright war and forcing co forcing cooperation on issues like climate change. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think we got two more scenarios here. All right. Still, the trend of increasing connectivity fostered in particular by the internet could reverse allowing for the globe to be siloed into different regions or economic and security blocks where information is walled off. Can we say YouTube? It's not much of it. Information is walled off, supply chains are insulated, and there is far less global trade, the author suggests. This system could leave many countries caught in the middle and at risk of becoming failed states while global challenges remain unconfronted due to the increasing fragmentation of society. Finally, the intelligence community predicts the U.S. could be headed for a 2040 in which countries are forced to confront a global tragedy such as a food crisis, ideally spurring a global coalition to mitigate these effects. Yes, overall, the council predicts that no single superpower will dominate across the world, suggesting that the United States and China would need to share responsibilities as they urge the rest of the world to choose sides. There you go. Anyway, uh, I'm putting my money on the, uh, on the uh, 2040 in which countries are forced to confront a global tragedy such as a food crisis with a little bit of world address, world adrift in which the prevailing chaos created by societal divisions, disinformation, slow economic growth, yes, and other factors continue largely unaddressed. That gets my vote here in the main street of Jasper, Florida here in uh, April of 2021. What is your vote, brother? Vote for the poodle. When vote the poodle for runs, the poodle. Vote for the poodle. How about vote for the little, uh, what is your choice, Sancho Panza? My choice is to go chase some chipmunks between now and 2040. All right, we're off into the economic black hole. We got water. Jasper, but we do have water. 30 minutes, he's meeting us there. All Excellent. right, we got water. Move to a small